Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, and the sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let I came out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations. That may look like the heathen nations, but the, but your father's seed line goes back to you being the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Shalom. It's your brother Halaki from the GMS Colorado camp, or Slaki from the GMS Denver camp, coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, with another video. And this time I want to go into, uh, you know, how, well, something the elders were talking about, and I was meditating on how we're going to get everything that we want in the kingdom, man. You know, because, yeah, like, like, when you first come into this truth, your mind is set on how many women you can have and this and that and the other, but it's deeper than that, man. You know, to get everything that we want, to get our heart's desire, man, we have to do it in righteousness. So the, the the Most High, you know, he he's okay with you having substance and riches and and, and big houses and and fancy garments and and uh, uh, children and women. He's 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 okay. He's fine with you having all that, but there's a certain way that you have to do it, man. And it's and it's through righteousness first and foremost, man. You see, it's by taking you get all that by taking heed and being obedient unto your how about shimmy how shot, man. It's deeper than just how many women you can have. You have to, before we can have all that, we have to get the righteousness first to keep all that, man. Because we got it all without having having the righteousness. We would eventually go off and we would find ourselves back in captivity, man. Suffering. You see, so that's why we need to be changed first and foremost. That's why we need to be put up under those, put up under, put under, put up under that second covenant first and foremost, man. Because that's what it starts with. And, and by us being put up under that second covenant, we'll get those blessings forevermore. See, we can do nothing without righteousness, man. And that's what it begins with. And we're trying, and this is what we're uh, fighting for on this side, man. To continue to walk in the righteous ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So we're going to start here in Matthew 6 and 33. It says what? But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see that? That's what we're supposed to be doing first. Seeking the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness. It begins with the righteousness, man. Because without righteousness, you can do nothing. Like Elder Yashua always said, you can have a billion dollars, but if you don't know how to live, if you don't know how to uh, live or how to how to control all that substance, you just gonna fucking you gonna you gonna fuck it off, man. Because you don't have any guidance on how to to, to live or manage uh, uh, these things that you have, man. And this is why we need the righteousness of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah put in us. And this is why we can constantly going into these scriptures, man. Constantly doing these videos, going on the highways and byways. You see, because we're seeking after the righteousness of the Most High, first and foremost. And all these things will be added unto us. You see? So let's get what the righteousness of the Most High is, man. Let's get Romans chapter 3. Because the thing, we're, and, and the thing is, we're, we're seeking after righteousness, man. We're not righteous by our own means or by nothing we did. We're, we're righteous through our Lord, Yahweh Shah. And Romans 3 tell us that, man. You see? Romans 3, and uh, we'll start at 21, tells us what? But now righteousness of the Most High without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, unto all and upon all them, them that believe, for there is no difference. And it's talking about for the Israelites, because who did Yahweh Shah come for? Did Yahweh Shah come for all nations, or did he come for a specific a specific nation? Let's get let's get a, uh, let's get two scriptures real quick. Matthew. Like Matthew 1 and 21 says what? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah, for he shall save his people from their sins. You hear that? He's going to save his people from their sins. Who is Yahweh Shah's people, man? What nation of people was Yahweh Shah born to? He was born in the tribe of Judah to the people of Israel, man. He's an Israelite, so he's coming to save the Israelites from their sins. 
That's who he's coming to save. All people, all nations are not Yahweh Shai's people. Let's get this real quick. Acts chapter 5 and 30 says what? The God of our fathers, which is the heavenly father Yahweh, raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins if you believe in Yahweh Shai. That's the only way you can have that for, uh, repentance and forgiveness of sins is by believing, man. You see? So Yahweh Shai came to all those that believe of Israel. He didn't come for all nations, man. So let's go back. Romans 3 and 21. But now the righteousness of the Most High without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. You see that? That's what makes us righteous, man. Our faith in Yahweh Shah. Our, our faith in our Lord and Savior, man. We're not righteous on our own. Without, without, on our own. <laughs> without Yahweh Shah, we are nothing, man. As Yahweh Shah told us, and what was it? Uh, was it John 15? Without him, we can do nothing. And that's exactly what it is, man. Because he is our righteousness, man. Our faith in Yahweh Shah is what makes us righteous. This, this is not nothing we do on our own. And this is what we're seeking after. To continually walk after Yahweh Shah and do as Yahweh Shah told us to do to the best of our ability. You see? So it says what? By the faith of Yahweh Shah unto all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference. Because what? He's talking about what? Everybody that believes in Yahweh Shah is, is, is because of what? They're Israelites. That's when you go into the Jew and the Greek. There is no difference, man. You see? Because they're all Israelites. Verse 23 says what? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High. And we all have, man. You see? The whole nation. Completely fallen short of the Most High, but that's why we have Yahweh Shai. You see? So we can be brought back to the Most High. Because it says what in verse 24? Being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that is in Mashiach Yahweh Shai. You see that? We, f we fell short of the glory, but we're now justified through Yahweh Shah. You see? If we believe in Yahweh Shah. So verse 25 says what? Whom the Most High have sent set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of the Most High. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh Shah. So this is the righteousness of, righteousness of the Most High. And we, are as, as Israelite men, first and foremost, we have been commanded to do what? To believe upon Yahweh Shah. You see? This is what we're commanded to do. This is how we seek out the Most High's righteousness, which comes through Yahweh Shah. You see, because that goes into what? It goes all the way back to the Old Testament when, when the Moses told, this, uh, told Moses this, man. The Most High said this to Moses. Let's get... Uh, Let's we'll start at 17. And Yahweh said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I command him. And that's what Yahweh came and did. He didn't come speaking his own words. He came, he came speaking the words of the Heavenly Father, man. You see? Verse 19 says what? And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words... Which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. And it's going to be required of all you that, that don't believe in Yahweh Shah, man. The most I going to put you to death. You see? Because this is how we brought back to the Heavenly Father, man. This is where our, right, our righteousness lies in Yahweh Shah. You see? Let's get John 14 real quick. To show you Yahweh Shah said he didn't come to speak his own words, man. John 14 and 21 say, uh, 24 says what? Let's start at 23. John 14 and 23. Yahweh Shai, Shai answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loved me not, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sins, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. Just like he told Moses he was going to do. 
Yahweh Shah was that prophet that, that the Heavenly Father Yahweh raised up from amongst our brother. And we're supposed to take we're supposed to be taking heed to what uh Yahweh Shah has to say because he's coming to what? He's coming on the behalf of the Heavenly Father Yahweh, telling us how we can get back to the Most High. And how is that? That's through Yahweh Shah, man. You see? Because ultimately what? Yahweh Shah is the word of the Most High, man. <laughs> this is why we take heed to him. Because he's the word of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. As it tells you in John chapter 1. It says what? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with the Alahayim, and the word was a power. The same was the same was in the beginning with the Alahayim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it night. The, co comprehended it not. You see? So Yahweh Shah, which is the word is the most high, he is life, man. You see? This is why we take heed to him. You see? Because he's the matter of fact, let's get that real quick. John <laughs> 14. In 6, Yahweh Shah, Shah saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You hear that? So you have to take heed to Yahweh Shah and believe upon Yahweh Shah so you can come back to the Heavenly Father, man. Why? Because Yahweh Shah is our righteousness. We're not righteous on our own. This is what we're seeking after, man. You see? This is what we're seeking after. And ultimately, Yahweh Shah is what? So since Yahweh Shah is the word of the Most High, what is he? He's the wisdom of the Most High, man. You see? He is that wisdom. <laughs> and wisdom leads to what? Wisdom leads to life. This is why we're supposed to be taking heed to what Yahweh Shah had to say. You see that? Because he embodies, he's the embodiment of the Most High's word, man. This is why we take heed to him and be obedient unto him, uh, unto him man. You see, John 14 and 6, Yahweh shall say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see that? Why? Because Yahweh Shah is our righteousness. We seek after being, we seek to be like Yahweh Shah is, man. You see? So it's more than having a million women, man. It's more than having a whole bunch of gold and silver and palaces, man. It's about the righteousness first and foremost, man. You see? It's about being like Yahweh Shah, man. So we can actually enjoy it forevermore. Because without being like Yahweh Shah is, man, we can't do shit. That's why we need to be changed, and that's why we need to have the law, statutes, and commandments put in us. You see? So let's go to Proverbs 8. Because this is what it's about, man. The wisdom of the Most High. You see, yeah, that, that other stuff is nice. It's going to be beautiful to have multiple wives and uh, thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of children. That's going to be beautiful, man. But it starts with what? It starts with the wisdom, which is Yahweh Shah. You see? So Proverbs 8, and I'm going to start I'm gonna start at 1. Doth not wisdom cry and understand and put forth her, 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 her voice? She standeth in the top of her place of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She cried at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. And that's talking about what? Be us building the highways and byways. Us building the highways and byways, you see, being the vessels that Yahweh Shah is speaking through. You see? To do what? It says what? Verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. So that's who Yahweh Shah is crying out to. He's crying out to the men of Israel. Beginning with that remnant, that, that those elect men who are going to return, who are going to come back and repent unto the Heavenly Father through their belief in Yahweh Shah. You see? So it goes on to say in verse 5, what? O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Because this is what it's all about first and foremost, man. The wisdom of the Most High. Here, for I will speak of excellent things. And the openings of my and the opening of my lips shall be right things because what? These are the words of the heavenly Father Yahweh. Just what do Yahweh shall say? The words that I come speaking speaking to you are not my words, but the words of Him that sent me. 
That's why it's excellent things, man. That's why it's right things because the Most High is going to tell his people the right thing to do. Verse 8 says what? All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Exactly, man. Everything the Most High is telling us to do is what's right. You see? Everything the world has told us to do, it was what it was, it was the complete opposite of what the Most High said was right, man. This is why we're supposed to be taking heed to what Yahweh Shah has to say. Or has said. And, and it's still saying through his men. You see? Because these are the words of righteousness, man. Verse 9 says what? They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. And that's going to be amongst the who? Amongst the remnant, man. Because two-thirds of our people are not going to get it. You see? Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. What's that Daniel? Chapter 10. What was that? Uh, Was it 12 and 10? Yup. Je uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. You see that? That goes for Esau. Two thirds of our people are the wicked. They won't understand. But the wise is going to understand. And who is the wise? The remnant of Israel, man. This is why we're not concerned about the whole nation of our people, man. We're only worried about that one third that's going to hear these words and get right with the Heavenly Father by believing upon Yahweh Shah. So we can be saved, man. You see? This is only for the remnant, man. So let's go back. So back in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 9. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. And we know that this is the right way because we understand what we was doing in the world. That shit was off. We heard this and like, yo, this is right, man. It was plain. You didn't have to ask too many questions. When you had a question, you was pondering on it. Guess what? The most I would put the spirit on the brother. And before you know it, your question was being answered before you even asked anybody about it, man. You see? That's how it works. And when, and when it's bought out, it's plain to understand, man. Verse 10 says what? Receive my instruction. Look at this. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. You hear that? So it lets you know that the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Hashem Shah is above having silver and gold. You see? Because this is what it's all about right now. And that's what the Most High is trying to show our people. But two thirds of our people refuse to get the message. It's not about the material bullshit, man. It's not about the material bullshit. It's about receiving the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Hashem Shah first and foremost, man. That's what that's the most important thing. And through that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, everything else will be bestowed upon you. This is why Yahweh Shah said what? Seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and all and, and his righteousness, which is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and all that other stuff will be added to you. It's about the righteousness first and foremost, man. It's about getting right with the Heavenly Father first and foremost, man. You see? It goes on to say in verse what? Verse what? Verse eleven, what? For wisdom is better than rubies. You see? For wisdom is better than rubies. And all and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. You see? For wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that are that may be desired are not to be compared to it. You see? It's about the wisdom first and foremost, man. Let me see where I'm at. Yeah. It's about the wisdom first and foremost, man. It's above all the precious stones, all the gold, all the silver, man. It's above, it's, it's above all the women that you uh you want in the kingdom. It's above all the children. It's above all the palaces. All the materials above all the material stuff, man. It's about walking in that righteousness first and foremost. You see, it's about having that fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and walking in obedience first and foremost, man. And by doing that, we can be blessed forevermore. That's what the curses start. That's what the slide. That's what the uh, blessings start off with. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah thy power will set thee on high above all nations upon the earth. But what did, what did it start with? Being obedient and walking in the wisdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah first and foremost, man. By that, we, we get the blessings. 
You see? So that's what it's about first and foremost. Being obedient unto the Heavenly Father and walking in His wisdom and fearing, not, and, and fearing Him, man. It's about that first and foremost. And now He's given us Yahweh Shah to believe upon. And this is how we say <laughs> We're saved. Our, our righteousness is through Yahweh Shah. That's the only way back to the Most High. You have to believe upon Yahweh Shah. And if you don't believe upon Yahweh Shah, your ass is done for, man. You see? That's, that's why the Most High said in Psalm chapter 18. If you don't want to take heed to that prophet, which is Yahweh Shah, he gonna he gonna he gonna require it of you, man. You're gonna have a problem with the most high if you don't believe in Yahweh Shah. You see? So let's go back. So back in Proverbs 8 and 11, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I wisdom dwell with prudence. And find out knowledge of witty, witty inventions. The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You see that? The fear. Because the fear is what? The fear, fear is the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom, man. To fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is the beginning of wisdom. So it says what? The fear of the Lord, Yahweh, is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. And the evil way. And the fraud mouth do I hate. So everything we see in the world, man. It's against the Heavenly Father, and we're supposed to hate it. You see? We're supposed to hate wickedness. We're supposed to hate homos and lesbians and transgenders and cross-dressers, man. We're supposed to hate people that eat abominable foods. This I had uh, selling drugs and uh, smoking weed and cigarettes. That's witchcraft, man. We're supposed to hate that shit. We're supposed to hate people that worship false, false idols, man. That's what we're supposed to hate because what? We fear the Lord. And when you fear the Lord, you what? You 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 uh refrain from doing that madness, man. Why? Because you fear the most high, and that's the beginning of that wisdom, man. Walking in obedience. And that's gonna lead to what? Hey, like I tell you, it leads to long life. It's gonna lead to the kingdom. It's gonna lead to you being a king on the earth. It's gonna lead to you having everything by walking in that fear. You see, but not walking in that fear, it, it, it leads you to what? Get get put to death, man. This is why we find ourselves here in Babylon the Great right now, because we didn't walk in the fear of the Lord, man. We wanted to do our own thing. We wanted to go and worship false idols and commit all type of abominable uh, sexual acts with these heathen nations. You see, worshiping their false idols. And because we did that, what, what happened? The most I put, up, put our ass up under the curses, and now we're suffering here in Babylon the Great and all throughout the earth. Why? Because we didn't fear the Lord, man. That's what it's about first and foremost. You see? Because Jake was up when we, when we had our own land, man. During the time of King David and King Solomon, we was up. But guess what? They wanted to fucking go off worship false idols and do everything the most I told them not to do. And what happened? He put us down, man. This is why it's about fearing the Lord first and foremost, walking in that wisdom, man. You see? Being faithful unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah first and foremost. Verse 14 says what? It says, uh, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. Through what? Through the wisdom of the Most High, man. By, by knowing what's pleasing unto the Most High, by doing what the Most High told you to do. Kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. And how do they rule? By way of wisdom, man. Verse 17 says what? I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Because what? The time is going to come where wisdom is no longer going to be found here on this planet Earth. Because what? The famine of the word going to hit. The most I going to tuck his prophets away. And he going to leave you, he going to leave you uh, two thirds to uh, fend for yourselves, man. So it says what? Look, them that I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. And that's what we've done through the spirit and poverty. How about Shemiah Washah, man? We heard these words. And they put fear in us. And we was like, what the fuck do we have to do to get right with the Lord? And we found out, man. And we constantly in it, man. Reading, studying, going in the highways and byways, doing these videos, man. Seeking early. <laughs> you see? Because we know it's about to come. Through what? Through the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High, man. So it says what? Riches and honor. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable, durable riches and righteousness. It's with who? wisdom you see 
it be it all begins with wisdom, man. That fear of the Lord. Verse 19 says, What my fruit is better than gold, yeah, than fine gold, and my revenue even and my revenue than choice silver. Because when all help, like it tells you in the scriptures, riches profit not in the day of wrath, man. You can have all the gold and all the riches, all the substance, all the women that women that you got, but when all hell break loose, what are you gonna do? What do you have to fall back on? What is your stability? Because all that material shit is gonna fall through. That's, that shit is not gonna save you. But what does it tell you in Isaiah 33 and 6? That wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time, the strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is his treasure, man. That's what it's all about. First and foremost, that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that fear of the Lord, man. Verse 20 says what? I lead in righteousness. It's like I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. You hear that? That's what wisdom does. Because by walking in wisdom, what? The fear. The fear, the wisdom of the Most High, it leads to righteousness. Why? Because you're doing what the Most High told you to do. You're refraining from that madness, man. You see? You're trying to keep the laws and stat laws that just come out to the best of your ability. And you're believing upon your Yahweh Shai, man. You're following the example that, that Yahweh Shai left. You see? Walking in that way of righteousness, man. Verse 21 says what? That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and fill, and I will fear, fill their treasures. You see that? That's what's going to lead to us having everything, man. Walking in the wisdom. And the best example of that, let's get this real quick. Let's get 2 Chronicles. So this is the account of uh, King Solomon. So 2 Chronicles 1, and we'll start at 7. And that night did the Most High appear unto, Sol appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto, unto the Most High, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Yahweh, power, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Woo-wee. <laughs> That shows you, man, the Israelites are the biggest nation on the earth. Verse 10 says what? Give me wisdom and not give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who for who can judge this thy people that is so great. So what, what did King Solomon ask for first and foremost, man? He asked for wisdom and knowledge because that's what it's all about. Now listen to this in verse 11. What does it say? And the most I said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart. And thou hast not asked, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies. Neither yet hast thou asked long life, but hast asked the wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I may have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had. Slot. Such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there be any after after thee, after thee, slot. neither shall there be any after thee have have the like. like neither shall there any neither shall there any after thee have the like. So because King Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge first and foremost, the most high gave him everything else. <laughs> you see? He sought the wisdom, not the understanding of the Most High first, and and just and because he sought that first, he gave him everything else, and that's why Yahweh Shai said, "What seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." Why, why did he say that? Because he was speaking from experience, man. He was speaking from what he went through when, when he asked for wisdom when he when he was uh as king when he was uh, walking the earth as King Solomon. This is why he told us that, man, and we have the account written right here. Of why Yahweh Shah said that. Seek the seek the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High first, and everything else is going to be added in abundance. The kingdom, <laughs> you see? That's what it's about first and foremost, man. The wisdom of the Most High. So now let's jump back to Proverbs chapter 8. And we're going to jump down to 32. Now therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. You see that? Walking in wisdom. Her instruction, hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, 
watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors, and that's what the men of the Lord do, man. That's why we're constantly doing videos and going on the highways and byways, man. We're watching, you see, daily. Verse, 30, verse 35 says what? For whoso find of me, find of life. You see that? And we just went into who? Who, who was the life, man? Yahweh Shah. And shall obtain favor of the Most High. Why? Because Yahweh, the, the Heavenly Father commanded us to believe in Yahweh Shah, which is ultimately the word of the Most High. Verse 36 says what? But he that sinneth against me, wrong of his own soul, all that hate me love death. And that's the same thing the Most High says about the word, right? And what does it say in Proverbs 13 and 13? What does it say? Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. You see that? Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. So if you hate wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, if you hate the Most High's words, he's going to destroy you. The same thing he said about Yahweh Shai. If you don't believe upon Yahweh Shai, he's going to require it of you, man. And what does that mean? You're going to be destroyed. What does it say in the second part of the verse? But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. You see that? If you fear the commandment, you can keep them. Believing upon your Yahweh Shai, doing what the Most High told you to do. You see? You, you, you will be rewarded, man. Why? Because you walked in wisdom. Now the Most High going to give you everything, man. You see? That's what it's about first and foremost. Let's get this real quick. So it's a proverb 1 and 7. The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You hear that? The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom, man. You have to have that fear of the Lord to do what he told you to do. Because if you ain't got that fear, you're just going to go out here and do, what, do, what, do whatever the fuck you want to do. And you're going to be destroyed because you don't fear the most high. You don't want to walk in wisdom. You see, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see? Let's get Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding, man. The knowledge of what's written in these scriptures, you see? That's what it's all about, first and foremost. Let's get this real quick. Let's go to uh, the Apocrypha. Let's get Sirach. This is Sirach chapter 1. Let's we'll start at 8. Read through this. Sirach 1 and 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, is sitting upon his throne. You see that? That's where all wisdom comes from, as it tells you in the first verse. Oh. Yeah, in the first verse. All wisdom coming from the Lord and is with him forever. So all the wisdom that, that we have, it comes from the Most High, man. It comes from the Most High through Yahweh Shah and is sent unto us through the Holy Spirit, man. So it goes on to say, going back down to 8. He created her and saw her and numbered her and poured her out upon all her works, all all his works, Salakia. Everything you see on the earth, it came from the mind of the Most High. It came from the Most High's wisdom, man. You see? From all the people on the earth, all the trees, all the creatures in the sea, all the creatures on the land, man. The stars, the sun, the moon, the water, the sand, the wind, the seasons. All that came from the Most High, man. All that's, the, that's all out of the Most High's wisdom. You see? Verse 10 says what? She is with all flesh according to his gift, and he have given her to them that love him. And that's talking about the Israelites, man. Wisdom is only with the Israelites. You see? And it says what? He have given her to them that love him. That begins with who? The remnant of Israel, man. That one third of Israel. Verse 11 says what? The fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah maketh a merry heart and giveth joy and gladness and a long life. And ultimately, by walking in his wisdom, it's going to lead us into what? Immortality, man. You see? If we continue to hold fast unto this, it's going to lead to immortality. Hey, it's going to lead to a, a merry heart, joy, and gladness forevermore. That's what walking in the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to lead to, man. That's why it begins with walking in that fear, walking in that wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and the righteousness of the Most High, man. That's what it's about, first and foremost. Verse 13 says what? Whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last. 
and he shall find favor in the day of his death. To Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is the begin like, to fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is the beginning of wisdom. And it was created with the faithful in the womb. So this is something we was born with, man. You know, Lord wouldn't we be a part of that number. We was born with the fear of the Lord, man. This is why when we heard the word, it struck fear in us, man. But when two thirds of our people hear it, they buck up against it. Because they, they weren't born, they were they wasn't born with that fear of the most high, man. You see? It says what in verse 15? She have built an everlasting foundation with men, and she shall continue with their seed, with the seed of Israel. You see? Then we will teach this fear to the to the rest of the nations in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 16 says what? To fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits. What's some of those fruits, man? We just read it right here. Uh, some of those fruits is what? A merry heart, joy, gladness, long life. That was some of the fruit of walking in wisdom, man. So it goes on to say, She filleth all their houses. She she filleth all their house with things desirable and, and the garners with her increase. You see? So by walking in the wisdom, by walking in the spirit, you see? It leads to us having carnal things, man. This goes into what the blessings say, man. You see? Go read the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through, uh, 1 through 14. And, and we gain all that by walking in wisdom, man. We can't gain it no other way. This is why Jake can't fucking overcome here in the society because they're walking in wickedness, man. They're not walking in the righteous ways of the Most High. So it goes on to say... The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is a crown of wisdom. Yeah, the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish, both which are the gifts of the Most High, and it and it enlargeth their rejoicing that love him, that love him. Exactly, man. By us walking in fear, the Most High is gonna bring to perfect health. We're gonna flourish. All that's gonna happen when Yahweh Shah returns, man. You see. These are gifts from the Most High. Let's get this one right here. Verse 19. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. So we have to continue to hold this fast, man. We have to continue to walk in that fear of the Most High. We have to continue to believe in Yahweh Shah. And, and when it's all said and done, we're going to be exalted. Just like it tells you with uh, Romans 8. If we continue to suffer with Yahweh Shah, we shall be made co heirs with him. You see? That's us being exalted and glorified, being glorified with Yahweh Shah. You see? Yahweh Shah walked in wisdom. He walked in the fear of the Most High, man. That's why he has everything that he has. That's why he's glorified the way he's glorified, man. He walked in that fear. He walked in that wisdom, man. You see? Let's get this one right here. Let's get a few right here. Let's get this uh, First Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. You see that? What's that? What, what, what are we holding fast, man? The words of the Most High. This doctrine, man. Our faith, our fear, our hope. And Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, we're holding that fast, man. You see? Let's get this one. Let's get 2 Timothy. 1. 13. Hold fast the form of sound words. You see that? Hold fast the form of sound words. What are, what are those words, man? The wisdom of the Most High. You see? There's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 says what? Hold fast the form of, the, of sound words which thou hast heard which thou hast heard of me in faith and in love it's like, and, and faith and love which is in Mashiach Yahweh Shah. You see? We have to hold this fast, man. We got the fear of the Most High in us now. We have to continue in that. We have to continue in this doctrine that the Most High has given us, man. Hebrews chapter 10 and 23 says what? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. And where is, where is our faith, man? In Yahweh Shah. You see, our hope is in Yahweh Shah. We got to hold it fast, man. 
For he is faithful that promise. And who promised, man? The most high promise. <laughs> Yahweh Shah promised, man. You see? That they were going to reward us if we hold this fast, man. If we continue in that fear, we continue to walk in wisdom. That we're going to have everything our hearts desire in the kingdom, man. We got to hold it fast, though. Revelation 2. And 25, man. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. What is that? There's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. Verse 26 says what? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. That's a part of walking in wisdom, man. <laughs> That's a reward for walking in wisdom by what? Receiving the heathen for an inheritance, man. We, on, we only get that through walking in the fear of Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Verse 27 says what? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. And why did Yahweh Shah receive that? Because he walked in that fear, man. It was promised unto him, but he had to go what? He had to walk in that obedience when he finally came as Yahweh Shah. He did it, and now he has this, man. He just waiting, he just waiting to come back to the earth to collect. Lord, when do we continue to endure as well? We'll, re hey, we'll receive the heathen for an inheritance right along with the with the Yahweh Shah, man. Why? Because we walked in the fear of of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. We walked in the, in wisdom, man. We walked in right uh, in righteousness, which is our faith in Yahweh Shah. You see, that's how we get these things. There's no other way to get it. You see, and nothing else is before this, man. This is what it is, first and foremost. Revelation three and eleven. Behold, be behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast with thou with which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You hear that? So we have to continue to continue to hold this fast, man, so we can receive that crown. Like it tells you in Second Ezra, man, we receive crowns from the hands of Yahweh Shah, and Ezra asks, "Why? Uh, 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 who are these that's receiving the crowns?" He says, "What? Those that stood stiffly for the name of the Lord, man." He said, "No. Then I commanded them who stood stiffly for the name of the Lord. You see, because what we held fast." What we've learned, man, we held fast to the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We sought the Most High's righteousness even unto death. So we can receive that crown of life, man. You see? So let's go back to Sirach. Sirach chapter 1, verse 20. The root of wisdom is the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, and the branches thereof are long life. Because, like I said before, us walking in righteousness, us walking in the fear of the Lord is is ultimately going to bring us into eternal life when Yahweh Shah returns, man. Lord, wouldn't we be a part of that number to be taken up on that chariot to receive that new body and the law, statutes, and commandments in us? You see? To be made immortal, man. All of that is going to come by what? Walking in righteousness, man. Walking in that fear of the Lord. Verse 21 says what? The fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah driveth away sins. And where it is present, it turneth away wrath. Why? Because if you fear the Lord, you're going to do what he told you to do, man. That's why I drive away sins. Because if you fear the Lord, you're not going to be out here willingly going off, man. If you fear the Lord, it's going to turn away wrath because what? You're not doing nothing to piss the most high off. You're not doing nothing to piss your high with off, man. And it's going to ultimately lead to what? <laughs> Everything else, man. It's about the fear, wisdom, the it's about the fear, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High first and foremost, man. You see? Once again, nothing comes before this. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 9. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. And who are those kings, man? We are those kings, man. Lord Case K, that's talking about us. You see that? Every brother in this truth is talking to us, man. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak that ye may learn wisdom and fall and not fall away. And what's the, and what's wisdom? What's what's wisdom? Fear is the beginning of wisdom, man. You see? Verse 10 says, What? For they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. You hear that? Supposed to be desiring the words of Yahweh Shah so we can know how to walk. 
Look into Yahweh Shah so we can have an example to look. So because he's on he's our example, man. Verse 12 says, What wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yet she is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. You see that? So you have to put forth the effort to seek this, man. Verse 13 says, What? She preventeth them that desire her, and making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. It says what? Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, because when all hell breaks loose, you, you took the time to seek wisdom early, so you're not caught off guard by the things that's about to happen. You know what's about to happen according to the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High. You see? So while everybody else is taking their time to go party and bullshit and Think that America's going to continue on. You took the time to take heed to what the Most High was saying, man. So when all hell breaks loose, you're going to be stable as it tells you in Isaiah 33 and 6. So it says, what? he, For he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom. And whoso, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her. Show of herself favorably unto them in the ways and meet of them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. You see? And what is love, man? Love is keeping the commandments of the Most High. And why do you do that? Because you fear Him. You see? That's the Spirit, verse 18. <laughs> and love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. You see that? But now we know we're not saved or justified by keeping the laws. We're justified by what? By believing upon Yahweh Shah. You see? By following Yahweh Shah's example, man. Verse 19 says what? And incorruption maketh us near unto the Most High. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bring up to a kingdom you see that that's how we get everything else man by desiring wisdom and we get all the uh, uh all the substance do domain over the earth the heathen nations for our ser servants and slaves man we get all that by desiring wisdom man. all the women the children the precious stones the gold a hey, power we get true power man sovereignty you see true freedom we get all that by what desiring wisdom man that's what's gonna bring us forth to a kingdom you see it's not about how many fucking women you have, man. How many how many women you have, how, how much gold you got. That, that's not it, man. It's about desiring the wisdom of the Most High first and foremost. And through that wisdom, we're going to be brought to the kingdom, man. You see? Lord willing, we continue to endure. So I want to read and, and show what is what is going to bring us to, man. So I'm just going to read through Isaiah 63, uh, 60 straight through, man. Uh, verses 1 through 22. I'm going to just read through it straight through. So this is uh, Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah is risen upon thee. You hear that? <laughs> so I was going to read straight through. But hey, what is that, man? That wisdom, knowledge, and understanding being shined upon us, man. This knowledge of the Most High being given unto us through Yahweh Shah. That's that light that's risen unto us, man. They did not say Yahweh Shah was the light of the world. So Yahweh Shah has risen upon us and, and given us that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. Given us that... Uh, uh, that spirit of fear in the Most High. You see? Verse 2 says what? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But but Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. You see? That's what it is, man. That wisdom of the Most High is being, is, is being poured upon us through Yahweh Shah. And the world sees it. Verse 3 says what? And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to, to they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. And thy daughters from shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And thine heart shall fear. And be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea. Shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. You hear that? The abundance of the sea is talking about what? The heathen nations. Because when you go to Revelation 17, it tells you what the sea is, man. Go look it up. You see? 
the forces of the Gentiles is talking about what? The wealth of the Gentiles. How is all this going to be bestowed upon us? By walking in the fear of the Lord. This is talking about us taking over the earth, man. You see? And how do we get to this point? How do we get to this stage of glory? By walking in the fear of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. You see? Seeking first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness. You see? Verse 6 says what? The multitude of camels shall come, shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephath, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praises of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nabaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with the scepters on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. And what's the house of the Most High's glory? The, the nation of Israel. How do we get to this point? By walking in the fear of the Lord, man. Verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows? And this is talking about the chariots, man. We're going to get chariots, man. You see? We're going to have chariots, man, flying vehicles in our kingdom. You see? <laughs> we get this first and foremost by what? Seeking the righteousness of the Most High, man. Verse 9 says what? Surely the owl shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, thy, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, thy power, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And why is the Most High going to glorify us, man? Why are we going to be glorified by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah? Because we feared him. We walked in obedience. We believed upon his son as he told us to do, man. Yahweh Shah gave us commandments, said what? Have no other gods before the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, and, and, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two things we have fulfilled the law, man. And we're trying and we're and we're putting forth an effort to do that to the best of our ability, man. You see? Verse 10 says, What? And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. You see that? The Most High is going to give us the heathen for an inheritance, and they're going to build our kingdom. You see? The Most High says, For in my wrath I smote thee. Why did he smote us? Because of our disobedience, man. That's why he put us up under the curses. This is why we find ourselves in Babylon the Great and scattered all throughout the earth, serving the fucking heathen, on the bottom, oppressed, vexed as hell each and every day, man. We are here because of our disobedience. But through our obedience unto the Heavenly Father, he's going to have mercy. He's going to show us favor and have mercy upon us, man, by bringing us into the kingdom. <clears throat> it's about what? First and foremost, walking in the fear of the Lord, man, being obedient unto the Most High. Being obedient unto his word. So it goes on to say in verse 11. Therefore thy gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut night. Uh, they shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought. You hear that? And once again they're going to be bringing their wealth unto us man. It's going to be caravans coming in and out, of, coming in and out of, the, uh, of the land of Israel day and night man. The heathen constantly bringing riches into our kingdom man. You see, that noble's going to be slaves unto us, man. That's what's coming. Verse 12 says what? For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly destroyed. We're going to have power, man. You see? And if the nation and, and whatever heathen nation don't want to be, don't want to serve us, we're going to, we're going to destroy them, man. That's the type of power that's coming back. You see? Not having a fucking crumb in Esau's kingdom. That ain't power, man. We're going to have true power, true dominion over the planet Earth. Whatever we say is what's going to go, man. You see? Verse 13 says what? The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The Most High is going to beautify our land once again, and he's going to rejuvenate the planet Earth from this decrepit state that it finds itself in, up under the rulership of Esau, man. You see? All these things the Most High is going to do for us because of what? Because of our obedience, man. Just like the Most High, he fucked us up, man. Because of our disobedience, the Most High fucked us up and put us in this low condition, but because of our obedience unto him, he's going to what? He's going to glorify the planet Earth once again. He's going to glorify our land once again. He's going to glorify us to, to, to something we have never witnessed before, man. All because of our obedience, you see? Verse 14 says what? The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. Talking about the heathen nations beginning with you Edomites. 
and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves shall bow shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Talking about our land, man. It's going to go back to a state that, that was even better than what the, uh, the, uh, the garden was, man. You see? This is what's coming from the Heavenly Father. Why? Because of our obedience, man. He's going to do all this. Verse Isaiah 60 and uh, 21. That was like Isaiah 60 and, uh, 60 and 16. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. You hear that? This is what the Most High is about to do. That sucking the milk of the Gentiles also goes into the wealth of of the heathen, man, constantly bringing wealth unto us, man. This is what we were gonna have, like, like wisdom said. <laughs> Did not wisdom tell you what she at, at by her side is uh, durable riches, <laughs> durable riches. Let's get that one more time. What is that? What is that? Proverbs eight and what? Let me see. Where is it? You see, riches and honor are with me, your durable riches. And where is it going to come from, man? The heathen nations are going to bring it unto us. <laughs> all that wealth that they got stored up in those vaults all throughout the earth, all that belongs to us. And that's what's going to be bought unto us, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Verse 17 says what? Now listen to this. For brass, I will bring gold. And brass is in abundance, man. You can find brass anywhere. You can go to a goddamn hardware store and just buy how much brass you want to want to buy. That's how, it's gonna, that's how gold is going to be in our kingdom, man. You see? That's how much gold we're going to have, man. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. And I will also make thy officers, officers peace. And thine exact is righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation. And thy gates praise. We're going to be back in our land safe, man. You see? No more, no more, no more fucking Edomites gunning us down in the streets, man. No more of, the, of these motherfuckers trying to shoot us up with a goddamn uh, 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 death potion, man. You see? We're going to be at peace in our land, man. This is what we're going back to. And how do we get back there? Through our obedience unto the Heavenly Father, man. Verse 19 says what? The sun shall no more be thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give her light, give light unto thee, but Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh shall be unto thee in everlasting light, and thy power, thy glory. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Meaning what? The wisdom and the understanding of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh will never depart from us ever again. We will never be in a state of not knowing who the fuck we are ever again, man. As we have found ourselves here in Babylon the Great, this 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 is the last time we will ever suffer something like this, man. We're going to have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the, of, of the Heavenly Father forevermore. Because it's going to be in us, man. You see, it's going to be a part of our DNA. It's going to be in our DNA, man. You see? For Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah shall be... Yeah, for Yahweh Bashim, uh, verse 20. For Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. You hear that? Because we're in a state of mourning right now, man. Even though we're rejoicing because we have this wisdom... Knowledge and understanding, we were rejoicing because we see this at the end uh, of, of Esau's society. But shit, we still here. We are still here, man. Being vexed every day, seeing all this madness that's going on. And this is why we're hastening the, the, the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai as apostle deemed this year, man. The apostle, the elder apostle heart are deemed, are deemed this year, man. Hastening the coming of the of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's what we're doing. So what? So he can end our morning, man. And it's coming soon. It's coming. So it's right around the corner. We see all the prophecies happening. Everything is taking place just like the scriptures say what happened. Just like the Most High said what happened, man. You see? It's all coming to pass. Verse 21 says what? Thy people also shall be all righteous. You see that? And how are we going to be made all righteous? When Yahweh Shah returns, beams us up, give us, give us those new bodies and put the law, statutes, and commandments in our minds, fully bringing us fully into that second covenant, man. Which was sealed by his blood. You see? So all the Israelites, every Israelite you see walking around, man, they're going to be in a, a righteous state in the kingdom of heaven. No more fucking 
dope fiends. You know what I'm saying? People walk around doped up, fucking just out here fucked up in uh, Babylon the Great, man. Ain't going to be ain't gonna be no more of that in the kingdom of heaven. So Isaiah 60 and 21 says what? Thy people shall, thy people shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. Why? Because of obedience, man. The obedience of the Most High. Obe being, like, being obedient unto the Most High. It's like you. you see? This is how we're going to get all this stuff, man. So like I said, yeah, it's, 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 it's dope to think about having all these, these multiple wives that's going to be in order. They're going to be bad. <laughs> They're going to be, man, you think the baddest motherfucker here in Babylon ain't going to be, they ain't going to compare to the to, to one woman in the kingdom of heaven, man. One Israelite woman, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful thing to have. It's going to be a beautiful thing to have families, have children, man. Have sons, have daughters. You see? All that's beautiful, but we can't get there unless we be obedient unto the Most High, man. We can't do it unless we are obedient unto the Most High. We can have nothing unless we're, unless we're obedient unto the Most High. That's what the Most High is showing us here, man. We can have nothing without him or Yahweh Shai. So it starts with that obedience, man. That's what it's about first and foremost. And everything else is going to fall into place just like the Most High said what happened, man. He's going to bless us forevermore. The curses, not the curses, the blessings, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, man. That's what's coming. But it comes through what? Obedience. So Isaiah 60 and 21 says what? Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, which is our land, the land of Israel. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. And that's exactly what's about to happen, man. Because we couldn't do this on our own. We, hey, we can't, we can't even get a damn, <laughs> we can't get a, a, a goddamn a bank together. <laughs> you see? So, hey, so everybody's going to know, the whole planet is going to know that this is of you. How about Shemiah Shah? How is that going to be, how is that, how is that being made known now? Through the prophets of the Lord telling the world what's about to happen for the Israelites. That all of this is about to be done by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, man. That Yahweh Shah is coming to redeem the remnant to take them into that glorified state, man. And we're gonna come out, we're gonna come down out of heaven, and it's gonna be an Israelite takeover, man. And we're about to take over the earth and establish righteousness in this earth, and the Israelites are gonna flourish forevermore, man. This is all of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, you see? This is what his will is, and this is what's gonna be done on the planet Earth. So verse 22 say what? A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. What is that talking about? One man is going to become a thousand because he's going to have multiple wives, and with those wives, he's going to have multiple children. You see? But it all begins with what? The righteousness, man. Obedience unto the Heavenly Father. That's how we get this. So, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful thing. It's something the most I promise us, but it begins with us being obedient to the Heavenly Father first and foremost, man. So it says what? A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. So, can you imagine that, bro? One man is a nation. We have a nation residing in our, in our sack, man. You see? We have a nation in us. You see? And the Most High is going to fulfill this prophecy right here, man. One shall be one and, and a small one, a strong nation. Whew. It's going to be beautiful, but it's not all about this. It's not about just having sex all damn day, man. It's about <laughs> seeking the righteousness of the Most High first and foremost, man. And then we can have all the other stuff, man. You see? All this, the, the, the gold, the silver, the substance, the heathen been up under us and all the land and the, the, the palaces and the chariots and the immortality. All that is a byproduct of obedience unto the Heavenly Father, man. Without the obedience, we get we don't get shit. When we're obedient, we receive everything at the hand of the Most High, man. As is promised. So Isaiah 60 and 22 say what? A little one shall become a, a thousand and a small one a strong nation. I, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, will hasten it. And it's time. You see that? This is what's going to happen, but we have to walk in the obedience unto the Heavenly Father first and foremost, man. And without the, without obedience unto the Most High, we don't get shit, man. Point blank, period. So that's what it's about first and foremost. Walking in obedience 
unto the heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. You see? So with that, man, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone for teaching you this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, and the sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba.